Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on custom hardware configurations. Today we're going to be talking about custom configurations for work and custom configurations for play. And with that, let's go ahead and begin this session. So, of course, we're going to begin by talking about custom configurations for the workplace. And we begin with the standard desktop, the thick client. Now, they should meet the recommended hardware specifications for running the proposed operating system. Don't just meet the minimum specifications for the OS or your users are going to be frustrated. The CPU should come from the mid to upper mid range of the manufacturer's line of CPUs. For the RAM, your limitations are going to be caused by the operating system. A 32-bit operating system has a maximum RAM limit of 4 gigabytes, whereas a 64-bit operating system doesn't have that limitation. Now let's move on to the thin client. Now on a thin client, most applications and files are accessed and stored on servers, allowing the system to only need to meet the minimum requirements of the operating system. Even with that in mind, they should still also have enough capabilities to run basic applications. Now let's move on to a graphic or computer-aided design or computer-aided manufacturing workstation. This is a workhorse type system and should be built with power in mind. The processor should be more powerful and should come from the OEM's line that is designed for heavy workloads. They do have lines that are designed for workstations. These systems handle large files with a ton of data, so the maximum amount of RAM should be included with the system. These types of workstations also require at least one high-end or specialized video card in order to function properly. Moving on to the audio video editing workstation, well, these are closely related to the design workstations that I talked about just a moment ago with a couple of special considerations. Now, they require very large and very fast storage, especially for editing video. They also require specialized audio and video cards, and the video card or cards needs to be capable of driving at least two monitors. They still require more powerful processors and a lot of RAM. The virtualization workstation. Well, there are two keys here to this configuration, the CPU and the RAM. The CPU should come from the upper end of the power spectrum and it should have as many cores as can be purchased and the client can afford. By the way, AMD's Operton series of processors comes with up to 16 cores. Now, the maximum amount of RAM, random access memory, needs to be included. This is because each individual virtual machine will be held by and operate within the RAM. So it's all shared between the virtual machines, so you need a lot of it. Now let's move on to custom configurations for play. And we start with the gaming PC. Modern gaming tends to be about the experience. It also has some specific requirements. The CPU in a gaming machine should come from the high end of the consumer market. And, because of the nature of gamers, it should also be capable of being overclocked. Modern games tend to be very graphics intensive, so at the minimum, an upper tier graphics card should be included, or two, or three. Well, sound makes up part of the experience, so including a good sound card will enhance the gamer's enjoyment of the system. Gaming and gamers tend to tax the PC. And the harder you run it, the more heat that is generated. So installing increased cooling capacity is also often required. So how about the standard home PC? Well, in most cases, the home PC has the same requirements as the thick client from the work configuration. Now let's talk about the home theater PC. In most home theater PC applications, the CPU and RAM only play a minor role, so their importance is minimized. This allows you to use a smaller form factor like an HTPC or an ITX based system, which allows you to use a low powered CPU and you might not even need to install fans. 
which is often a requirement of the home theater PC. These systems do need to have improved audio capabilities, so you want to install a sound card that offers surround sound. They also require a TV tuner card. And finally, for best results, the home theater PC should have at least one HDMI output to drive a television. Now let's move on to the home server PC. It's often used for media streaming and file sharing. The CPU requirements are fairly minimal for this type of application. It's more important to have more RAM than a powerful CPU. The home server PC, especially when it's being used for media streaming, usually requires more and faster storage. Large, fast hard drive should be included. To improve your throughput for a media streaming PC, you might want to consider bonding multiple Ethernet channels to the network. This will increase your bandwidth from the media streaming PC. Now the key to building any custom configuration is to understand what it's going to be used for. Be sure and talk with your clients to fully understand what their intended purpose is for that PC. You need to understand what is important to them. Also be sure that you and the client know what the budget for the project is going to be. You don't want to go over budget. You should also strive to make the system as future-proof as you possibly can and still remain within the proposed budget. Now that concludes this session on custom hardware configuration. We talked about custom configuration for the workplace and we talked about custom configurations for play. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I look forward to doing another one.